Big shops are cool. I love big shops. You know, uh, I used to work in a big dealership, and uh, then I, when I taught high school, I had a big shop, and then on TV, I had a big shop. And I'm building a big shop right now. The big tire garage has to transition into a larger shop to take on more builds. But, you know, for this build, I wanted it to be in my shop. This is the shop behind my house. It's the big tire garage. It's what it always kind of was, my shop. It's not big. It's, you know, right around maybe 900 square feet. Uh, it's got some good tools in it. But you can still build an awesome vehicle in a small shop. There's lots of guys doing it. And I thought, what better way to kick off this new venture than with a new project that's set for guys to do it themselves and in an attainable shop with attainable tools. And there's no better thing to do than tear apart this Jeep Comanche in the shop behind the house. I'll probably even be working outside sometimes and that doesn't bother me at all. That's how I started and I still love it. So today, it's uh, a lot of big things happen to the truck. Uh, we throw a whole lot of parts at it and basically change it from a shell of a body and a little bit of a frame rail to a rolling chassis almost. Um, so it starts with the axles. And uh, for this particular truck, I'm using uh, Dana 44 axles out of a Jeep JK. You see a lot of JK axles on uh, Cherokees and TJs because um, they're a little bit stronger than the previous generation 44s and they're a little bit wider, so you get a good stance. Um, so once I have that axle cleaned up, I sling it underneath the truck, lower the truck down over top of the axle, make sure it's good and square and centered, and then I actually weld the axle to the frame where it will sit when the suspension is fully compressed. That way you make sure there's no sort of uh, uh, interference issues as the suspension cycles because you've got it set all the way up as far as it will go when the suspension is fully compressed. Um, then it's time to build the suspension. For this truck, I got a uh, four-link kit from our tech industries, and I love their four-link kits because it comes with everything you need to build the kit. It's uh, brackets, tabs, heim joints, misalignment spacers, it's all laser cut, super nice steel, and it even comes with the hardware to bolt it all together. The reason I like this particular four-link kit is that the uh, frame side upper and lower mount key together away from the truck and they basically become their own little superstructure that once it's fully welded I can then bring it over to the Comanche and weld it onto the uh, frame stiffening plate that I added before. That just gives it a little bit more strength considering I'm welding right onto the unibody and I do plan to tie these into the cage uh, when we start building the cage. Once those are in place, it's just a matter of uh, measuring, because the axle's not going anywhere. Uh, measuring your tubes, putting your brackets on the axle, putting the tabs on top of the truss, making sure they're all good and straight, and tack them into place, and then the four link's done. Front axle, it's a little bit different. I originally planned to just get another junkyard uh, Jeep JK Dana front axle, but I couldn't find one for less than like two grand. And for that amount of money, I can get what I consider to be one of the best upgrades for a Jeep JK, and that is the Dynatrack replacement axle housing. Now the cool thing about the Dynatrack housing is if you had a JK, it would come with all the brackets and all the tabs where you just bolt it right into place and you would have an immediate upgrade, not only to a Dana 44, but to a better Dana 44. Uh, thicker axle tubes, better knuckles, you'd end up with uh, actually more ground clearance because of the unique shape of the Dynatrack housing. And it's just a great upgrade for Jeep JK. I had them just send me the exact same axle, no brackets, no tabs, because I knew that I'd be building a custom suspension. Now when you build a custom suspension on the front of a rig, you can't just drop the axle in and start welding brackets on because there's a lot of things you have to take into account. You gotta plan for where the tires are gonna hit when it's turned. So you need to assemble everything out from that inner C uh, all the way out to basically the wheel and tire. So that means uh, putting in the ball joints, putting on the knuckles, even putting on the brake rotor because it does make a difference. 
and then you bolt the tire in place, and then you can actually start to turn it, uh, figure out any clearance issues you might have, as well as figure out where your lower links are gonna fit. And if you do it right, you should have uh, no tire contact on the link when it's turned all the way one way. The front suspension is gonna be a three link with a panhard bar. And just like the rear, I'm using a kit from Artec Industries. But all I can do right now is get the lower links in place uh, because I need the steering and actually the engine and transmission to figure out where the panhard bar as well as the upper link is. But what I really want to do is see what this truck is going to look like with all four tires on it sitting at full stuff because this sucker is going to be low. I call it the domino effect. It's the, it's the fact that that first decision you make about a project is gonna completely affect the rest of that project. If you decide to put a V8 engine in your rig, then that domino falls and it's gonna tip over four or five other dominoes further down the line. And you have to know what those dominoes are. If you can't see that far down the road, it's gonna come back and it's gonna bite you. Those are, that's, it's, those are lessons learned. The problem is, is most people learn those lessons the hard way. Uh, those lessons are expensive. Uh, those lessons hurt. They hurt your pocketbook. They hurt your feelings because you've built something and then it breaks and you knew better and now you don't have the money to fix it. Um, but you know, education isn't cheap. The suspension may seem like it's about 90% done, but right now it's more like 50% done. Yeah, the axles are underneath the truck, they're located, the rear four link is done, and the front three link, the lower mounts are on. But if done correctly, you will spend more time figuring out upper link placement and panhard bar placement on that front three link because that's really, really important to how that suspension's gonna react. Now for the upper link and the three link, that means that we're gonna have to go ahead and make another uh, frame stiffening plate, but this time for the inside of the frame. And uh, once that's in place, then we can locate that upper uh, link mount. Now I also, I'm going ahead and I'm actually gonna drill a hole through the floor of the truck because I'll probably end up tying that upper link into the cage at some point in time. And this way the hole's already there, I have access to the top of the link. The position of the panhard bar and the drag link and how they work together is probably where most people get intimidated on these front three link suspensions, but it's, it's really not that hard to understand once you just sort of imagine the suspension in, in movement. Um, what a lot of people think is that what you want is the uh, panhard bar and the drag link to be parallel to each other when you look at them from the front. And that's, that's not really what we're after. What you actually want is you want the panhard bar and the drag link to operate in the same arc as the suspension moves up and down. And that's gonna eliminate what's called bump steer. Um, the reason you get bump steer is as the suspension moves up and down, the panhard bar is basically moving it back and forth underneath the truck, just slightly. If the geometry is wrong between the drag link and the panhard bar, what happens is as that suspension moves up and down, it actually tries to push and pull the tire, which it can't do. So in turn, what it does is actually pushes and pulls the pitman arm, and that's what causes the steering wheel to move. Now, there's lots of ways to ensure that they are traveling in the same arc. You can draw it all out on a piece of paper, scale it all down, and check the arc there. Uh, if you're good with computers, you can draw it on uh, SolidWorks and cycle the suspension. There is a rule of thumb that works almost 99.9% .9 of the time, and that is to make sure that the distance from the pivot point on the knuckle to the center of the pivot point on the axle side of the panhard bar mount is the same as the distance from the pivot point on the pitman arm to the pivot point on the frame side of that panhard bar mount. 
Uh, if you do that and then add in a mount with a couple extra mounting holes, like this one has here, and most of the aftermarket kits will come with mounting holes, that'll allow you to sort of fine tune it if you have to get that angle perfect. Um, that will pretty much ensure that you don't have any bump steer. Um, this mount, I had to modify it a lot to make it work, and I even have it leaned a little bit forward. And that is because I'm packaging a very special spring package into this truck. I'm gonna use something I've always wanted to try, and that is a set of airbags. So, uh, four airbags, one for each corner, and those will basically be the spring in the system. Uh, my theory is it'll give me uh, adjustable suspension, It'll still give me lots of articulation because I'm not gonna mount the bottom of the bag in place. I'm gonna let the axle droop away from that bag. So I'll still have about 14 inches of suspension travel. And it's just something different and cool that I've never done before. So uh, here we go. The rear was just a little bit trickier because I was running out of space. There's no room for the bag between the frame rail and the tire, uh, like on the front axle. So I had to actually move it to the front side of the axle on the inside of the frame. Uh, it's not a huge deal because it actually allows me to integrate a new frame stiffening plate into the upper bag mount, also uh, tie that all into the shock mounts that I got from Artec Industries. Now for the shocks for this truck, I'm using the Metal Cloak six pack shocks. I like these shocks because they package really small. They're only like 13 inches long when they're fully compressed, but I'm still gonna get a huge amount of wheel travel. And once those are mounted up, now the suspension is actually finished. Except for all the welding, of course.